Hurricane Idalia is all the way on up to Category 1 strength this morning, and it is expected to become a major hurricane before landfall, as you may know. I have all of the details on Idalia as it continues progressing northward this morning. Thank you so much for joining me here. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Let's get right into this five-minute update. Let's start with your cone. Here's the latest one. You can see hitting that big bend area very hard for us here with the hurricane warning right in that area, as you can see in the red. But we have tropical storm warnings that go all the way down closer to the Naples area, as well as up the coast around Jacksonville along the Space Coast there and into portions of southern Georgia and I'm sure we will see tropical storm force warnings um, get going for us here as well into portions of the Carolina coastline. Speaking of those warnings, here's another look at them. You can also see we have hurricane warnings sitting right over the western tip of Cuba and the chance of hurricane winds has now gone up for us here in the Big Bend area around Sea or Key to around 60 to 70 percent but of course the chance is always going to be highest offshore but nonetheless, we're talking about sustained hurricane force winds. The gusts are pretty much unavoidable in this area. And definitely tropical storm force sustained winds are going to be pushing in. Now, here's the timing of those. By 8 p.m. today, we're looking at some of these tropical storm force winds pushing on into places like Miami. All the way on up to Tampa, we could see some of these getting going. But note, if you do see them in Miami, it will probably be in a very weak form or very brief form, if at all. And then here it goes on up into the space Space Coast region by tomorrow at 8 a.m. After passing the Big Bend around 2 a.m. tonight, so keep this in mind, the worst of these winds is going to hit in the middle of the night tonight as the brunt of this storm pushes on in. So really between midnight tonight and midday tomorrow, that's when the worst winds are going to be pushing on shore. And by the way, these mid-afternoon bands... Um, could cause a tornado for us here. Here's your radar for this afternoon. You can see that level 2 severe weather threat from places like Gainesville all the way on down to Sarasota. That's where I'd watch for a few spin-ups to get going out of these bands that push south to north along that western coastline. By midnight tonight, dangerous wind and surge will have begun. You can see pretty much the brunt of this system still well offshore, but the southerly flow coming straight out of the system on the east side is just going to be pushing that wind and water all the way on up. So if you're anywhere Tampa southward by midnight tonight, tonight the worst of your surge will have already happened or will be imminent at that point and then in places like spring hill all the way curling around into the cedar key area that's where i'd watch for this to begin starting around midnight tonight life-threatening inundation is expected from tampa to Atcha Apalachicola, everybody. We're talking about a few feet of surge all the way in the Apalachicola region, but this curls around, and right in that Big Bend area, on the wind, on the um, Nature Coast Force here, we've got 8 to 12 feet of storm surge expected there in that Big Bend. That is life-threatening. And you need to be quite prepared for this to push on over. And we'll also see some of that inundation be up to 7 feet into the Tampa Bay area. And we'll also see some of that develop as the storm pushes northeastward along the Georgia and Carolina coastline with that feed coming off the Atlantic. Now, landfall is likely Wednesday morning around 6 to 11 a.m. Central Time. Be ready for this. If you're not evacuating and have not followed your plan on Florida disaster website for us here, then you're going to be stuck in this type of weather for us, probably a Category 3 or Category 4 hurricane pushing on shore right around the Apalachicola area with the worst impacts right on that eastern side eye wall. Along with this dangerous you know, storm and surge and the wind, we're talking about a spear of dangerous rainfall will come in as well. Even as the storm heads northeast, you can see pretty much the rain totals pretty much uniform across the area. It crosses a pretty thin but dangerous band of some of the rainfall that could be anywhere from four to six inches of rain. But some of those orange spots you see even going inland into the Carolinas and then back off the coast there of the Outer Banks. That's where we're looking at 6 to 10 inches of rain. But right where this makes landfall there around Cedar Key, wouldn't be shocked if we picked up a quick foot of rain out of this. Along with the foot, um, excuse me, along with the 12 feet of rain that are going to be pushing on in. <laughs> of 12 feet of surge pushing on in from the coast. Wow. Key messages for Hurricane Idalia. There's a danger of life-threatening storm surge inundation along portions of the Florida Gulf Coast where storm surge warning is in effect. Inundation of 8 to 12 feet above ground level is expected somewhere between Chassahowitzka and Osceola River. Residents in these areas should follow any advice given by local officials as hurricane warnings are expected within portions of the hurricane warning area. Um along the Florida Gulf Coast with the potential for destructive winds where the core of Idalia moves on shore. Strong winds will also spread inland across portions of northern Florida near the track of the center of Idalia, and heavy rainfall is expected to continue into portions of Cuba, and then of course that heavy rain will continue with the system as it pushes into Florida and then inland along the coast. I hope to have more updates coming on this system throughout the next several hours, so, so stay tuned to videos and shorts for that. But thank you so much for watching for now. Here are the credits. Go ahead and like and subscribe for me.